When Naughty Dog revealed that Uncharted 4 would be the first Uncharted game to have its own story DLC, I was amazed and hooked on the idea as they pulled it off very well in the past. During further production, game leads Sean Eskig and Karl Morganau both confirmed that they would no longer be providing a story DLC, but rather a standalone game in itself. The main protagonist would be Chloe Fraser, a character who was introduced in the second installment as what is close to being my favorite game series of all times. Chloe Fraser has been such a huge change in the tone of the Uncharted games, adding an extra layer of humor, weightiness, and self-determination, almost being parallel to Nathan Drake. After coming out of Uncharted The Lost Legacy, I can say that I was more than pleased with what I got out of my 8 hour experience, and here's why. The story follows Chloe Fraser and her Uncharted 4 antagonist side partner Nadine Ross in a brief but enjoyable journey through the vast yet beautiful parts of India. This time around, they are in search of the tusk of Ganesh, who is the son of a Hindu god of destruction named Shiva in the mountains of India while in the middle of civil war. There are several mentions to Chloe's and Nadine's past, adding more depth between these two characters. Chloe reveals that her father died while pursuing the tusk of Ganesh, meanwhile Nadine must learn to forget what she has failed to do with her father's company shoreline. I really like the chemistry that Chloe and Nadine pulled off in the game, as both of these characters never had much development done in other previous Uncharted games. From the extremely rich environments to the unbelievably alluring lighting, The Lost Legacy is definitely a beauty, even more so than Uncharted 4. I found myself playing around with the photo mode system in this game a lot more than I have with any other game that I've owned on my PlayStation 4, which says a lot. The Lost Legacy pushes the boundaries of what the PlayStation 4 can deliver upon, and this just shows what the talented and hardworking team at Naughty Dog can accomplish with so little time and makes me excited to see what's in store for us when The Last of Us Part 2 gets launched. Although the gameplay was pretty similar to that of Uncharted 4, as this was just an expansion to the game, I still felt as though it offered something brand new and was impressive to play regardless with the subtle cuts between cinematics to gameplay and so on. These methods are evident in many recent games as they are just new advancements, however Naughty Dog uses fun and engaging techniques that really make their games worth playing. With The Lost Legacy, you get new features like lockpicking doors, crates, or even arsenal boxes which gives you, the player, additional rewards like collectibles and silenced pistols which is a new approach to the stealth combat. When playing in the Western Ghats, if you go out of your way to collect all of the 11 Hosala tokens, you will be rewarded with a stone which notifies you whenever you are nearby any collectible items, which is awesome as it's almost a special thank you from Naughty Dog to those players who go out of their way to collect those tokens and who go out of their way to explore the lush environments in that section of the game. Another note is, this game is full of amazing set pieces and large sequences, so be prepared to have your jaw dropped as the ending few set pieces were astonishing and had me appreciating the success of Uncharted 2 a lot more. Henry Jackman, Uncharted 4's composer, is back at it again with such an emotional gripping score that made cinematics and gameplay way more intense and fine, which really made this game more fun and interesting to play. The Lost Legacy did a good job including characters like Nadine Ross and our former lieutenant, Orca, which made up for the, some of the lackluster development that Uncharted 4 suffered from. We got returning characters like Sam Drake, who I thought really made up for the long but interesting time I took in the Western Ghats, which was a huge sandbox of exploration, dialogue, and gameplay. Picture Uncharted 4's Madagascar level, but bigger and more beautiful. As far as the antagonist goes, there's a Sov. A tempered but calm, heavily educated warlord villain who I felt needed more screen time but definitely had his moments throughout the game. He too, like Nadine and Chloe, are in seek of the Tusk of Ganesh, but it becomes more clear what Asav's greater ambitions and intentions are once you play through the ending chapters of the game. Asav might be the perfect villain to me if only he had more screen time and more moments of malicious intents with better reasonings for them. Although I never felt afraid during his presence, I never did with any other Uncharted villain either. But it was the sudden change from wanting to preserve a culture that Asav grown to become passionate and persistent around, only later to betray that culture over profound ideologies is what I felt made Asav one of the best Uncharted villains to date. In times of war, these aqueducts, they would run red through the capital. Those who would not fight had to be used to inspire those who would. Now this was the first Uncharted game to not star Nathan Drake in it, with only a few optional conversations between Chloe and Nadine about him. 
Despite me missing our overly the top character, I still really enjoyed playing the Lost Legacy, and not seeing Nate in an Uncharted game for once was pretty refreshing. This only means we for sure will be getting more Uncharted games in the future, which I don't technically want, but it will be really cool to see what Naughty Dog or whatever other companies might do with such a well-known series in the gaming industry. Overall, Uncharted The Lost Legacy hit the nail in every goddamn coffin for me, adding improvements to character development and story, which is normally what the many of the other previous Uncharted games got criticized for. It's funny, beautiful, full of action, full of surprises, and if you're truly an Uncharted fan, there's no reason why you shouldn't be amazed or pleased after coming out of playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy. As a verdict, I've decided not to score this game with a number, but rather give it an A for amazing. Thank you for watching this review, my name is The Snarks, and if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to give the rest of my videos a look, and possibly even subscribe. And with that all being said, what are you waiting for? Uncharted The Lost Legacy is still out, and if you haven't played it already, I suggest you do so, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching.